Trump has um, previously criticised NATO countries and European countries who, in his view, don't pay their fair share of uh, NATO defence. But what do you make of these latest NATO criticisms and comments? Well, these comments go one step further than even Trump has gone before by in, in, in suggesting that uh, NATO's enemies are welcome to attack and that he would do nothing to defend them. Uh, what these are uh, is, is very pleasing words for Vladimir Putin, who is holding on uh, in his attack on Ukraine, hoping for uh, Trump to come back to the White House uh, next January. It's also, of course, uh, indicative of the fact that Trump's influence is stopping the aid budget going through Congress, that, that uh, his military aid that Ukraine badly needs. But I think also the way in which uh, Trump uh, is making policy on the hoof that these um, evangelical-like uh, rallies that he does indicates a lack of seriousness and actually will even make members of his own party think twice about supporting him, given that he attacks the fundamental basis of uh, U.S. foreign policy and indeed Republican Party policy. There must be an election uh, coming. I, I wonder if a discussion of Joe Biden's age and his uh, capacity to be president is now unavoidable. Uh, unavoidable. I see even Hillary Clinton in the last few hours has uh, referred to uh, Biden's age. I think his age is something which is priced in, effectively. All the opinion polls uh, show that uh, the American public, 75% of the American public, would rather it was not Biden uh, and Trump uh, facing each other off in November. Uh, there are concerns about his age and his uh, mental capacity. Uh, we have seen countless examples of both his and Trump's confusing names and places and locations. And uh, therefore, there are issues there which uh, Biden faces. But I think most people in their evaluation of Biden uh, look at him and say, yes, he's old, yes, he fumbles. But actually, he is more mentally acute than Donald Trump, who increasingly seems to be unhinged. And therefore, it's that calculation which the electors in America, unfortunately, are faced with in November. When it comes to uh, victory in elections, uh, David, um, it used to be said that uh, it was the economy stupid. That's what they used to say. New polling suggesting more Americans trust Donald Trump with the U.S. economy than Joe Biden, despite months of strong growth. What's going on here? Why is this? It's partly a lack of sophistication in the American electorate. Uh, what they do is they, they say, I failed better off under Donald Trump than I do uh, under Joe Biden. What that misses, rather uh, amazingly, is the effect of the pandemic, where industrial production and energy production came to a standstill. And when it started again, there was much of great demand for that. That creates, creates inflation in the system. They're feeling the effects of that, assist, uh, uh, that inflation, and they're attributing that to Joe Biden. And looking back to the start of the Trump period, without recognizing whoever was in the White House, would have been an inflationary period. So it's, it's slightly uh, up to the Biden administration to try and make that case. The Biden campaign hasn't really got started yet. And as the economy improves, the growth rate is, is great. The uh, employment rate is, is, is unprecedented. It's for them to make that case and trying to convince an unsophisticated electorate to take a more sophisticated view of the economic situation. So this weekend, NATO uh, under fire, uh, European governments too. Um, what else is at stake for... Uh, the rest of the world uh, in the next U.S. presidential election? This is probably the most consequential uh, U.S. election for the rest of the world, let alone America, uh, in 70 or 80 years, uh, because Trump has promised to bring in sweeping uh, tariffs on all imports into the United States. He is someone who is likely to abandon the U.S. commitment to its allies in NATO and elsewhere. Uh, and he is likely to abandon U.S. commitments to environmental policy. So a, a Trump presidency uh, would be a, a massive challenge to the basis of the world order as America has produced. If, if Donald Trump loses, uh, those things aren't challenged. And therefore, uh, most international observers uh, looked to this as a, a threat from uh, Trump and a possible relief if Biden were able to win. David, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. David Dunn, Professor of International Politics at the University of Birmingham.